Welcome. Thank you everyone who's here for the video. We're going to adjust the camera just a tiny bit. Appreciate you being here. We're going to open the grab bags that we found at the ride along the other day. So I hope you were able to join me then because we did uh, find a few things and we're going to open. I actually started to open these grab bags and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to wait and do a video instead. You know, I found the little Longenberger basket, right? I love that. They're so well made. I should have never sold my collection, but that happens. Welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're here. What we do here is ooh and all over jewelry. We uh, hunt for it as we did when we went to the thrift store the other day. And I acquired this basket full of tiny grab bags. And I did see some comments later. People were asking me for the prices. I just didn't even realize that I hadn't... Um, that I never actually talk about the prices <laughs> because you know the whole point is to find a bargain right and hopefully resell it for a bigger profit and that's that's why we do it that's why I do it or to keep it and love it which is what I do I love jewelry here I hope you love it as much as I do because that's what we're gonna do we're gonna look at it we're gonna ooh and ah over it and um, hopefully you'll enjoy that so let's get started the Longenberger basket was three dollars pretty cool this is what i had a really nice one that was christmas with a lid and everything these are so cool this is from 2002 but the hunt is always good too usually at goodwill they don't really know a longenberger baskets but you never know it depends on the day and who's working and whatnot all right so welcome thank you again for being here don't forget to hit that thumbs up as soon as you walk in the door a little dust on my table. I had an auction yesterday. I do have my auctions over on Facebook. So if you're interested in anything that you ever see um, in a haul, you can email me or you can wait for my auction over on Facebook. It's a private group, but it's a free group. Everything is in the description box. So be sure and check that out at the end of the video. And um, so that's why it's a little bit of a mess here. So let's get started. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Olive. Rayanne, how are you? Linda, Karen, Barb, thank you again for being here. Joni's here as well. All right, so I did spot some things. The things about the thing about these little bags, you can't always tell what's in them. You can't always tell if there's something missing. I'm not really going to sit there and and you know dig a hole through it and and inspect it. This looked like coral to me, and indeed it was. So I really kind of recognized it white coral it was five dollars and this place has wonderful sales too let me just open it so i can save the bag instead of cutting it this place has wonderful sales for example whatever the next holiday is any veterans day or memorial day they do a half price on the entire store but it gets so crowded that the line literally snakes around so it's uh, and i think they really do have bargains all all week long they also choose colored tags throughout the week i think they, they don't have senior or teacher day but they have uh, first responders i believe get a discount police firemen that kind of thing so that's always good this is um, a big chain here in texas it's called texas thrift and um, you know it's hit or miss like anything else these things Oh, really? Right where you were? Yeah, it says right here, hand woven in Ohio. Yeah, Dresden, Ohio. Um, that's where those Longenberger baskets are made, indeed. So, as I was saying before, this is an addiction. This is an absolute obsession. So, not only is jewelry uh, an obsession, but hunting for it is even more passionate for me. So, if you like to do that kind of thing, don't forget to subscribe. This is amazing. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications so you'll never miss another video. And this one has a vintage barrel clasp. I still have an orange one like this, the beautiful red, orange, natural coral that's very, very protected nowadays, as it should be. This is a living marine animal and an integral part of the marine life and our life for that matter so um, these are definitely artifacts of the past 
and I understand that I respect that and that's why I hunt for vintage <laughs> lots of vintage items and isn't that pretty I don't think I've seen one <clears throat> I've had a, a white one before but I don't believe it had all of these other little kind of nugget type I think I'm going to clean it a little bit I think I'm going to put it in some soapy water or maybe just shower with it and let it get naturally a little bit of the debris off and I think it'll really look even prettier. I love it though. That would really look nice with the natural orange one too, right? Hi Becky, I thought I'd do another one before my nail polish starts shipping. <laughs> starts chipping because that's usually when I, I stop. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do a video. My nails look horrific. By the way, people do ask me for the for the rings of the day. So I will show you that. It's not that I want to show off or brag or anything like that, but people have been requesting that I show them the rings I'm wearing. So we call it the rings of the day, and here it goes. <laughs> this is a beautiful Kirk's Folly that was sent to me by a wonderful subscriber named Linda. This is an amazing aquamarine set in 18 karat with diamonds that I've had forever. This is a diamond ring I found last month in a jewelry jar. Again, that explains the obsession compulsive disorder of not only jewelry but jewelry jars when you find treasure you just keep coming back for more keep hoping for more this is a 14 karat white gold band that i also found in a jewelry jar uh, i think i found this on a youtube auction it's an old tosco piece with abalone i really do love that wraparound ring these both these are two rings sent for me to my from my subscriber Roxanne. Thank you, Roxanne. See, I do wear them. These are identical. They're sapphire and uh, topaz, and I kind of match them up together. Another wonderful subscriber sent me this beautiful Kale Sedney and blue topaz ring that I adore. Thank you so much, Miss Dodds. All right, so there we go. Let's see what's in the other bag. I like this little lipstick charm. I fell in love with that. I told you I wanted to get that color. I'll carry it with me to Macy's or Neiman's. <laughs> Match me up, I will say. I love this coral color. I know it would look horrendous on me, but I just think it's so pretty. And I do love the charm. Whatever, what is this? A bracelet? Oh my gosh. A Louis Vuitton. <laughs> oh my gosh. A little faux Louis Vuitton charm. This is cute. I don't know. I really fell in love with this lipstick, but the eye, these are nice little charms. Boy, whoever did this went all out. Look at the butterfly charm. See, this did not, that little bag did not do this justice, did it? I mean, honestly, it's heavy. These are glass beads. This is open in the back, but it's still heavy. The Eiffel Tower is metal as well. It's even got some amazing verdigris, <laughs> natural verdigris from the Eiffel Tower. No, I don't know. How, what color is the Eiffel Tower? I've never seen it. Oh, look at the Monstera or whatever that is, a little leaf. Hi, Martha. Let me say hi to a couple more, more people. Sandra, Colleen, and did I say Becky? Hello to Becky. Thank you, Becky, for being here and Juana. Oh my gosh, these are crystal too with AB coating little butterfly and the butterfly is enameled on the other side how pretty is that I love that these are glass too and they're like full of blue glitter hey Gina oh my gosh this is just too cool and I don't even like all of this fake stuff but I love that <laughs> it's just like over the top yeah everybody's on here lipstick <laughs> Oh my goodness, how do you buckle it up? Almost looks like a bra strap. What am I supposed to do? You think it slides in there? I think it slides in there like a bra strap. I'll figure it out. Oh my gosh. Rhinestones on the lipstick too. Look at the beautiful shell. It's got a nice enameling job on it. Another butterfly, the LV. <laughs> Oh, nice rhinestone star as well. And then we have an elephant and so forth. Oh my gosh, that is just beautiful. And what was that one? $4. Not bad. Some of the things I did put back because they were 
I think more like six dollars and it looked like one of them had a missing rhinestone and I thought this was interesting and I know I found some ivory as well but I wasn't sure about this and I did bring some other items to kind of show you because a lot of people are always asking how do you tell the difference between ivory and bone and celluloid and I don't claim to be an expert but I'm going to show you what I know and what I look for and I'll show you some close-ups. So this one was five dollars and moreover I actually felt like these were genuine gems, gemstones or natural stones I should say they're not all gemstones. Not everything is a gem quality so I really am misspeaking when I say gemstone. A gemstone should be ready for jewelry and um, you know gem quality they're not all but this is pretty. I don't know what it is. It kind of looks like um, obsidian but kind of brown. Is there such a thing? And that's definitely Jasper. And let me get my loop on this rosette here and see if that's ivory or bone. This is bone. This one definitely looks more like bone. Let me let you look at that for a second. I'm going to go get my other loop. I can see better with the other loops. Oh, what did I do with it? I always have a million of them and now I don't have one. Here it is. Here it is. All right. Yeah, this is definitely bone. And the bone is just... So you see like little, you don't see Schrager lines, you see more like porous areas on a bone piece. And the rosettes look the same. And there's some jasper. Doesn't that look a little bit like obsidian on the brown beads? Let me pull you back a bit. Okay. So that's that. That was nice. I like the coral. These kind of all coordinate. I think someone donated their collection. All right. And I think that one was $3 or $4. Oh, wait. I think this was from the other necklace. I opened the ivory one because I knew when I saw it at the ride along, it was ivory and I was curious when I got home. I also really like this bangle. This was $3. Look how pretty, and it's tiny. This is what intrigued me about this one because they're usually so big. This might not even fit me, see? It will, I can push it in, but I'm not gonna struggle with it. But this would fit someone with a smaller wrist so nicely. It's got that beautiful pink and orange national colors of India, pretty much. They use pink and orange so wonderfully there. Isn't that pretty? That's brass. So it's got some kind of indentation there or cutouts. So maybe some kind of an overlay with the whatever material they inlaid that way. Thank you again for hitting that thumbs up. Hey Kathleen, Miriam, how are you? Karen, I'm glad you're here. Mary, Kelly. Yeah, I like that one. And again, all of these, they run three five seven you just never know they're never more than about seven dollars i don't think i probably would not buy one but I actually look i think no i bought uh, oh this was something else i found this this was over this was the dooney and burke brand new wristlet that one was definitely over five dollars so I found that at the exit. I was leaving and I saw it at the counter and I asked the lady, how much is that? She said, I can't sell it to you, there's no price. You guys know the drill. And then I said, well, can you ask the manager? She said, she's gonna tell you the same thing. I said, well, can I ask her? And then she says, <laughs> and the manager's walking up. Oh my gosh, the stories I could tell. I need to write a book. And the manager's riding, walking up and I said, can you give me a price on the Dooney and Burke? And she said, no, not till tomorrow. And then she said, and I said, well, what's going to happen tomorrow? So I said, well, run it through circulation, and then we'll put, I said, so you really can't tell me about it tomorrow. It'll be gone. And then she comes back, and she says, here, I can sell it to you. I just found the tag because it was a return. <laughs> I was like, okay. 
<laughs> it was so crazy. But I'm glad I asked, right? I just never know. All right, next one. These two brooches came together for $5. You saw me pick this one up and I told you it was pearls. And they are. And then there's some black um, crystals in there. And it came with this one. And I told you this one had like a little Vivian Westwood vibe for me. I don't know why. Just something about the chains and the glamour and the, you know, the punk. Anyway, here we go. This one's purple. There are black crystals in there. This is shell. So this is abalone shell. You can see the abalone through the back there. But then I guess they dyed it black and they made a beautiful flower. And that came with this one. And this one, see how it has chains around it? Beautiful stones in it, kind of citrine colored. And I guess, I guess kind of a smoky quartz color as well. I'm sure they're just glass. You see how they did that with the chains? And I think it kind of reminds me of the plaid that Vivian Westwood is so famous for. That's why I'm thinking of that, because the way she, they put the chains around it, it gives it like a plaid effect. This one is signed, so I'll show you. Um, and it is soldered on there, so it's funny how they have this little thing right here. I don't know if that's where you would put a chain through or what. So uh, Vivian Westwood's sign is is the orb so it, I know it's not hers I was just comparing what it reminded me of but this one has like a heart could that be a Stella and dot it has the little dots around it at least that's what it looks like to me and look at the way it's made like with three bales or something back there very very interesting I do love those stones so I mean, you could wear it as a brooch any way you want, but I would think as on a bail, you would wear it this way. With the bail, rather, as a necklace. Okay, then I found... What else? This beautiful brooch that I sold yesterday, but I wanted to show it to you before I ship it out. And it's so funny because... I was showing it at the auction and I, I had it on a dress and I thought that has the exact same colors of a tiger and I didn't realize it's actually a tiger animal print design and this one was still tagged. This one I got the, at the counter at Goodwill. I didn't find this one at the grab bag but isn't it beautiful? So that one did sell yesterday. It's got kind of an antiqued gold color and it's beautiful. I think it's so different to have that coloration, that design of an animal print on a beautiful bow. And the way they did that bow is amazing too. It almost appears to have movement. I really love it. And again, I didn't realize it was actually tiger stripe until I was showing it at the auction. I was just talking about how beautiful the coloration was. The color pattern was definitely tiger. And then that's when I see that. It's so crazy. All right, now here is the ivory that I found at the thrift store there in the little grab bag. And I think that one was $3 or four. I don't remember, but I knew I recognized it. More because of the way it yellows. It's a, lots of times ivory does yellow. Not many, not all of them do. Then the barrel as well. The hidden barrel clasp is another sign of a very vintage piece. And um, I'll show you up close the Schrager lines that you can see on ivory and you cannot see on bone or celluloid. So you'll know and you won't sell it because they're very strict about reselling ivory. You have to have uh, pretty much the provenance, like prove that it was vintage and so forth. I mean, a lot of people still try to get away with it, and uh, but it is against the law protected species of course and that I hope you can see those little see there those little it's they're really prominent on this one since it's so yellowed but it definitely looks different from the bone and that's what I was trying to show you and then here I mistakenly thought this was ivory and this is uh people told me later this was celluloid and you can see that is different as well this one has more like 
almost ridges and not Schrager lines. And this one has some elephants. It's made to look like an ivory piece. Let me see if you guys have any comments. You have that amber and another made of bone. And, uh, okay. This is the celluloid. And it's so different. I thought these were actually skulls when I got it. I didn't realize these were even elephants. They look, had kind of a skull look to me. But yeah, someone informed me that this was celluloid. And then here is another bone. And you can see, again, the, that porous, almost pot marks on the bone. That is pretty obvious on this one. This is a beautiful piece that came out of a jar a while back. It's a nice, long, really tribal looking. But you can see the big difference on those pieces. And then another one, this is one I've had since the 70s, and this is quite interesting because I bought this in the 70s, and all of this time, I actually thought, well, they sold this to me as ivory years ago. And please don't come at me with your laments. We've talked about that before. These are relics. These are artifacts. I buy them, and I do not resell them. These are mine. <laughs> These are mine. I just, I know what they are, and I know they're relics. But anyway, I'm trying to tell you that I bought this in a store where they were selling ivory at a mall in the 1970s. And this is not even ivory. This is actually fake. <laughs> I'm just now seeing it. You can tell that those are way too uniform, way too contrived. And a few years ago, I discovered that this is not actually ivory. And I think these were very popular. This has actually fallen apart completely. It's very, very old. It used to have 14 karat gold, uh, a 14 karat gold blanket full of diamonds and uh, not diamonds, but little rubies and some other colored gems. And then these are 14 karat. And those are 14 karat. And I had some kind of a stone there as well. But it's all fallen apart. And that is actually faux ivory. And you can see that these are way too uniform. So that is that. And again, I don't want to offend anyone. I just wanted to show you what I found at the thrift store. And show you the wonderful coral, the bone, and celluloid, and the old ivory that will go into a chest that I have where I keep them because I do not sell them and again they are just to me a respectful way to to preserve what is part of our past and we can't change that and pretending that it didn't exist doesn't do anything honestly but uh, just fighting for what's going forward, how we can protect animals now, protect our earth and so forth. That's what's important now, not what happened in the past, because we can't bring it back. So thank you again. Please hit the thumbs up on your way out. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you can do that tonight. Take your time to go and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Also consider joining the channel here. The join button is below. It's got some perks involved with my Facebook auction that I do every Saturday at around 5 o'clock p.m. So uh, join me there if you ever want to see the jewelry that I sell. I also sell accessories, handbags, clothing, and uh, if you ever see anything that I bring in a thrift haul. I haven't done a thrift haul in a while. Just haven't had time to put out all the videos I want to put out. But if you ever do see anything, please just shoot me an email. That information is also in the description box. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.